Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I'm going to be making this television stand with an open concept for speakers and electronics in the middle. For construction I'm going to be using some double-sided oak plywood. I'll be trimming the edges using the Maxiwa Bander and the Edger and it's a really simple build. Stick around and watch how easy it is to make something like this using good quality oak plywood. Okay, I have all my pieces, the, the legs, the inside shelf, and the top. And because I have a dowling jig, I've decided that I'm going to use that for the assembly. There's a few different things that you could do here. Uh, you could use biscuits, but I'm going to use dowels. Uh, and a few weeks ago, I was working on some testing with putting some dowels using some MDF material. And I thought today I would, because I haven't done it yet, I'm going to take a moment and we're just going to see just how strong this is. So let's have a look at this. I assembled this using quarter inch dowels and you can see the difference. I'm going to be using 3 8 dowels in my project today, but uh, I thought it would be fun to test just to see how strong these dowels are. So I'm just going to push on this uh, and see how much effort it takes to crack that off of there. Oh, I'm going to need a clamp. Well, it turns out it was a lot stronger than I thought. I knew it would be strong, but I didn't think it would be this strong because I couldn't hold it down here. So uh, now I'm going to use two hands and... Oh, wow. Look at that. Now that was glued uh, just around the dowels. Let me show you a close-up of that. So that's how strong those dowels are. They actually tore the material, the MDF material, super strong. Pretty impressed with that. Okay, I've reconfigured my dowling jig to do edges, and I'm not going to start until the third hole here, and then I'm going to do every third hole. And that's what those holes look like. I'm just going to flip it around and do the other side now. And now I just need to put the matching dowels in the end pieces. Okay, that's perfect. Now all I need to do now is I'm going to pre-finish the wood and then we'll edge it and we'll be uh, ready to glue it all up. Well, a little bit of time has passed uh, and I've taken that time to give all of the boards uh, two coats of a clear finish. And I, when I put these together, I use these special little brackets so that I can coat both sides at the same time. And I'm just going to take a minute now. I'm going to take everything apart and going to do one last finish because some of these holes, some of these uh, dowel holes that I've made might have a little bit of finish in them. So I don't want them to be uh, blocking anywhere. So I'm going to do one last dry fit uh, and then we'll be able to run the edges through the Maxiwa edge sander uh, or edge bander and um, we'll be ready for the finalist glue up and assembly. Okay, my Maxiwa edge bander is up to temperature and I'm just going to start running my boards through.
Now I just took a moment to set up the Maxiwa Edge trimmer uh, and set the block here and we're all ready to run all these boards through. Well, now it's time for final assembly. So I'm going to put glue in all of the holes and I'm going to distribute it around. I'll seat the dowels and then I'll put the glue in the uprights. So I'm not going to make you sit through all of this, but uh, we'll kind of speed things up a little bit for you. Well, and there it is all together. A little bit of fussing around, and uh, I'm just checking to make sure. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, good. And this side will be good because that's going to be square. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Well, we'll let that sit for a while, and uh, when we come back, we'll put it back on this. Well, not much has changed, uh, except the glue is now drying hard. So what I'm going to do is flip this on its front here, and I'm going to cut a rabbit. Let me show you the rabbiting bit I'm going to be using. And there's what that rabbiting bit looks like. I did have to change the bearing uh, so that I get a little bit deeper cut, and that's almost three-eighths of an inch. And you can see a sample of the wood I'm going to be cutting there uh, and how deep that is. So well, let's get started. Well, there's the back all nicely cut out, uh, and I have a piece of plywood here ready to put in there. I still need to do a little bit of cutting to size, but uh, that's not going to take long. Uh, let me show you the rounded corners here and what I'm going to do. And there's an example how you can see how the corners are rounded. So I'm just going to cut the plywood to size and then just sand the corners so that they fit nice and snug in there. Well, it took a little bit of time uh, attaching the back on there and I've tacked it on, uh, but now it's time for the big reveal and I haven't even looked at it myself yet. Oh, it's <laughs> lots of dust back here from the router. Oh, it's looking very nice. Let me just turn that around. There we go. That's looking just great. That'll be perfect. It's nice and open in here, just the way it's supposed to be, so we can put uh, speakers and um, all the other electronics. So that's great. It looks just perfect. Well, that concludes my video for today. Uh, the only thing I have left to do, I'll have to put a little uh, hole in there so that I'll be able to have put um, power and, and sort of connections to the speakers and whatever electronics have to go in here. Uh, but all in all, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I used double-sided oak plywood for this. Uh, it worked perfectly, got a nice finish on the edge of it so that you can't recognize that it's plywood. It's not very heavy, it's sturdy, um, and it's going to hold enough weight and fit in perfectly with the decor that's already there. So. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.